So this group work begins with us doing mean, median, and mode on the front side from 2.1, and then on the back doing range, variance, and standard deviation from 2.2. I'm going to do question one on the front, which goes along with question five on the back, and do all at once to this specific data set. So the first thing that I'm asked to do here is to find the mean. In order to find the mean, I'm going to take all the numbers in the list, add them together, then divide by how many numbers there are. So when I do this, I'm going to take 9 plus 6 plus 7 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6 plus 0. After them, adding them all together, I'm going to divide by how many numbers there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers. When I put this into my calculator, adding together the top, 9 plus 6 plus 7 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6 plus 0 gives me a total of 38. When I divide that 38 by 8, I get 4.75. I'm not going to round that. I could understand rounding that to 4.8, but I'm going to leave it as the full 4.75 because I know when you're asked to do things like this in the computer, they don't round until the very last step. So my mean of these numbers is 4.75. When I go to find the median, I really don't want to use the list as it's currently constituted. I want to make sure that I rearrange it where I've written it from smallest number to largest number. So in my new writing of the list, I see that zero is here. That's the smallest number on my list, followed by two, then three, then five, then six, another six, seven, and nine. I always like to double check that I have the full number of data points that I want at this set. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should have eight. This is the correct ordered list. To find the median, I first need to find the position of the median. The position function is n plus 1 divided by 2. In this case, there were 8 total points plus 1 divided by 2. Gives me 9 divided by 2, or 4.5. What that really means is I should look between the 4th and 5th data point and average those two data points. Make sure I'm using the ordered list, not the unordered list. In the ordered list, 1, 2, 3, 4, the fourth data point is 5. And then 5, the fifth data point is 6. That means the two that I should be averaging, or in other words, adding together and dividing by 2, are 5 and 6. When I add those together and divide by 2, I get 11 divided by 2, which gives me 5.5. So I'd write my median as 5.5. Common mistake that students make is they think that this is the median. Again, this formula tells me where to look. It tells me the position of the median, not the actual median. Also notice this 5.5 doesn't appear in the list. That's okay. I can have a median that's not actually a data point in the list. When I look for mode, I'm looking for what is occurring the most often. Here in my ordered list, it's easiest to see that only one thing repeats, which is the 6. That means the mode is 6, and if I'm looking for a specific type of mode, this would be a unimodal situation. Uni, that prefix means 1. There's one mode, it's unimodal. Specifically, that mode is 6. This was everything from number 1 on the front side of the group work. We're now going to skip down to number five, which is on the back side of the group work. There we're asked to find the range, which is largest minus smallest. The largest number in my list, or the one on the far right, is a nine. The smallest number in my list, or the one on the far left, is a zero. When I do nine minus zero, I get nine. The next thing that we're going to calculate is the sample variance. The sample variance is definitely a little more difficult. Here we've got to use our S squared formula where we're going to take each individual data point. 0, 2, 3, 5, 6, 6, 7, 9. From each of them we're going to subtract the mean as we calculated it above. So when we calculated the mean we got 4.75. Each time we're going to be subtracting 4.75. 
after we subtract that 4.75, we're then gonna square the result. So I'm gonna write it first as what we get when we subtract, then what we get after we square it. Once we square the result, we then can total up all of the squared differences to give us a sum of all the squared differences. So when I do zero minus 4.75, I get negative 4.75. When I square that, I get 22.5625. Here, when I do 2 minus 4.75, I get negative 2.75. Negative 2.75, when squared, gives me 7.5625. Here I'm gonna get negative 1.75, which I then need to square. When I do 1.75 squared, I get 3.0625. Here this is going to give me five minus 4.75, which is 0.25 squared. I believe it's 0.0625, let me just double check that. 0 0.0625. When I do 6 minus 4.75, I get 1.25. I'm going to square that. 1.25 squared gives me 1.5625. When I do it for 6 minus 4.75, I get the same exact thing, 1.25. I square it, I get the same thing, 1.5625. When I do 7 minus 4.75, I get 2.25, which when squared, gives me 5.0625. When I do 9 minus 4.75, it should give me 4.25. I then need to square that. When I square 4.25, I get 18. 0.0625. I now need to add together all of those square differences. So I'm going to take 22.5625. I'm going to add to that 7.5625 plus 3.0625 plus 0.0625 plus 1.0625 five six two five plus one point five six two five sorry I put an eight there instead of a five let me put the five where it belongs we need to do it again plus one six two five plus one point five six two five plus five point oh six two five plus 18.0625. When I add all that together, I get a total of 61.0625. So I now have the sum of the square differences. I'm very close to my variance. There's one last step that says that I need to divide it by n minus one. So I'm gonna take this 61.0625 divided by n minus one, which in this case we had eight data points. So eight minus one or seven. When I put that in my calculator, my answer divided by seven, I get 8.7232. I'm going to four decimal places here. Be aware that sometimes it tells you to round to like three decimal places for standard deviation, but doesn't say anything about variance. In those cases in WebAssign, they definitely want an unrounded variance. So I'm going to more decimal places than I normally would just to kind of make sure that I'm saying leave a lot of decimal places here. Sometimes it marks you wrong for not having enough decimals in that variance. When I then have the variance to get to standard deviation, I take a square root. So second root, second, and 
Jones or gives me a final standard deviation of 2.954. It's really 3.5, let's leave it as 3.5. I think that they tell you to round the three decimal places on these, but if I was rounding three decimals, this five needs round up, so I'd get 2.954, I should say. All right, so again, steps that we did here to find the mean, add all the numbers together, divide by how many numbers they are, that's our mean or our average. Median, what's in the middle? Really what we're doing there is a position function, n plus one over two, which gets us to where to look. We then look where to look. If it's a 0.5, it means we have to average two numbers. If it's just a whole number, then it's whatever's in that position is the median. We solved and got a median of 5.5, which we reported here. In the ordered list, the only thing that repeats is this six, that is our mode, and it's unimodal. The range is the largest number minus the smallest number, in this case, nine minus zero, gives me nine. The variance is a very complicated formula. It uses the mean, it takes each individual data point, subtracts that mean, and then squares the result. All of those squared results are summed or added together in order to get this total of the squared differences, which is then divided by n minus one, or however many data points there were minus one. That got us to this value, 8.7232, which is our variance, or our s squared. The standard deviation, or s, and I really should put that symbol here, this is s squared, this is s. Sometimes it gives you those instead of um, variance or standard deviation as a word. So once we got to that variance, we really should be showing the standard deviation as the root of 8.7232 equals 2.9535. This is a second example of the same situation where on the front, we find the mean, median, and mode from question two, and then on the back, we continue and find the range, variance, and standard deviation. So we start the same way. We're going to add together everything we see, divide by how many data points we have. 89 plus 21 plus 50 plus 35 plus 21 plus 83 plus 50. After we get that total, we'll divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 data points. So when I put this into my calculator, I get... 89 plus 21 plus 50 plus 35 plus 21 plus 83 plus 50 to give me a total of 349, which I'm then going to divide by 7. When I do that, I get 49.857. I'm going to call it 49 point eight six. I now need to find the median. To do that, I'm first going to need to put everything in order from smallest to largest. So the smallest thing I see is 21. I see it again, another 21, then a 35, then two 50s, then an 83, and an 89. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven data points. The median position is n, in this case seven, plus one divided by two. That gives me four. Unlike the last example where I got 4.5 and it had to be between the fourth and the fifth, this gives me a whole number, which means I can just count over and wherever's in that position, that's the data point that I should select. One, two, three, four, 50 is in the fourth position, so 50 is my median. Again, I don't need to average it because it was a whole number. Really, if I have an odd number of data points, adding one divided by two will give me an even number. When you have an odd number of data points, there's one that's exactly in the middle. When I go to find the mode, I see that 21 repeats twice and 50 repeats twice. That means there's two things that each repeat the same number of times. If I had three 21s and only two 50s, 21 would be the mode and not 50, because 21 would repeat more times than 50 did. 
In this case, since they each repeat twice, that's the mode. I'm gonna include both of them, 21 and 50. Because I include two different numbers here, it would be a situation where it's bimodal. Again, looking at that prefix, this means two, bimodal, just like a bicycle has two wheels. Moving on for what's on the back now, so this would be question six on the back that's dealing with 2.2. To find the range is relatively easy, I just take the largest number, 89, minus the smallest number, 21. When I do that, I get a range of 68. To find the variance isn't nearly as easy. I need to take each of these individual data points and write them out, so starting with 21, then 21 again, 35, 50, 50, 83 and 89. Each time I'm going to need to subtract the mean that I found of 49.86. After I subtract the mean and get the difference, I'm going to need to square that difference. And then I'm going to summate or add together all those squared differences. So when I do these subtractions, I'm then going to square the results in order to get squared differences. 21 minus 49.86 gives me negative 28.86, which when I square it, gives me 832.8996. We know that this is the same because it's the same number 21. So again, negative 28.86, which will be squared and give me 832.8996. When I do 35 minus 49.86, it gives me negative 14.86. I square that in order to get 20 or 220, sorry, 0.8196. I'm then going to do 50 minus 49.86, which gives me a really small number of just 0.14. It's going to happen the same way when I do 50 again. Each time when I square it, it's going to give me 0 0.0196, 0 0.0196. When I do 83 minus 49.86, it gives me 33.14, which I then square in order to get 1,098.2596. When I do the same thing for 89, I get 89 minus 49.86 gives me 39.14, which I square in order to get 1531.9396. Now that I have all of these squared differences, I need to take the total or sum of them all. So I'm going to take 832.8996. I'm going to multiply it by 2 because I know that I'm going to add this one in. Then I'm going to add the next one, which is 220.8196. Then I'm going to add 0 0.0196. Then I'm going to add 0 0.0196. Then I'm going to add 1098.2596. Then I'm going to add 1531.9396. When I do this, my sum total for everything is 4516.8572. That total needs to be divided by n minus 1, or in this case, 7 minus 1, or 6. So I take 4516.8572. 8572, I divide it by the total number of data points 7 minus 1, which in this case would really be dividing by 6. 
when I take that total and divide it by six, I get an answer of 752.8095. This is my answer for variance, or S squared would be the symbol for it. So I'm going to put here 752.8095. If I take the square root of that, 752.8095, my calculator tells me that the root of that would be 27.437. So I'm going to write that as my standard deviation or as a symbol S, 27.437. Uh, these last two problems in the group work are three and four. So basically, these two problems are just mean, median, and mode, where we're not going to go through and do the variance, the range, the standard deviation. Here, when we go to find the mean, again, we start by adding together everything on top. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus 800. Dividing by how many data points there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight data points. When I do that in my calculator, adding everything together gets me 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 800 equals 828. When I divide that by the 8 data points that I have, I get 103.5 as my mean. The median, since I have 8 data points, would be in the position 8 plus 1 divided by 2 which would give me 4.5 between the fourth and fifth data point. If I add together the fourth data point four plus the fifth data point five and divide by two, it gives me nine divided by two or 4.5. So even though position and median were the same, that's definitely not something you should assume happens. In this case, it does happen. As far as our mode, we don't see anything that repeats at all. That's why I would have to say that there's no mode. So I both write that as mode equals and I circle no mode as the option that I'm selecting. For question four, these aren't in order, so let me go ahead and order them so we're ready for the median. I see the smallest number is three, then four, then five, then seven, eight, nine, two tens, and a 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When I go to find the mean, I add all nine numbers together. So eight plus nine plus 10 plus 12 plus four plus three plus five plus seven plus 10. After getting that total, I divide by how many numbers there were, in this case, nine. My total, 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 12 plus 4 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 10 gets me to 68. When I divide that total of 68 by 9, I get 7.5555, repeating forever. I'm going to say that's about 7.56. When I go to find the median, I use my position function, nine plus one divided by two. That gets me to five, or in other words, the thing in the fifth position is the median. One, two, three, four, five, eight is right here in the middle where I have four data points in front of it, four data points behind it. It's in the exact center. The median's the exact center. That's why I get eight. For the mode, there's only one number that repeats, it's this 10. That's why the 10 is the mode. And this is a case where, again, there's only one mode, so it's unimodal. The only type of mode we didn't use was multimodal. That would be if something repeats the same number of times, not twice, that would be bimodal. When we had, like, um, earlier, I think it was 21 and 50, it would be if another number beyond that repeated. It was 21, 50, and 83, for instance. Then there would be three modes and be called multimodal. 